All right, take it away. All right, so uh, this is gonna be less in depth on what SQL injections are, but more focusing on one of the more advanced capabilities that you can do with SQL map. Uh, SQL injection, if you're not familiar, uh, is just something that basically allows you to inject arbitrary SQL queries within a current SQL query that's being used in whatever context it might be. So maybe it's like a login query where you have a username and a password that are being input into an SQL query. And then that's being ran against the database such that it can then return either a valid user or say that there's no valid user. The injection part comes in is when the user input is not validated. So if say I was able to start just chunking in different parts to try to break up that query inside say the admin or not the admin, but sorry, the, uh, the username field, uh, I could potentially create an arbitrary query, which then would just give me an access to a user, whether it be just some like the first user in the table or be maybe an admin user. Uh, it's a very common case, I would say, or one that's seen a lot maybe in like a, for a login page, but, um, a common way that this can be exploited automatically is using something called SQL map and SQL map is this amazing suite of just like automated, just uh, SQL injection. Basically you just shoot it out an SQL injection and it'll sit there and try to enumerate it with a bunch of different SQL injection methods and then try to do different things. So like you can, for example, uh, download an entire database uh, from just that little SQL injection query. So whether it's like a time-based SQL attack or it's just a simple, okay, I'm just gonna enter in a uh, quotation mark here and then just do a union attack that way uh, where we start then just chaining together other queries together. Um, SQL map has that ability. It's pretty advanced, uh, but a lot of the uh, underutilized features I've seen that are one of the more advanced ones is called the eval command. And what's nice about the eval command is it allows you to do additional things to the query before it gets sent off to the uh, to the target. So for example, in this case, what they're doing is trying to create a Flask session cookie uh, using uh, just Python pretty much. So it's a Python interface and we say like from Flask unsign import session is S, it creates a session cookie with the secret that somebody had exfiltrated from a machine. We pass it the cookie and we can then, we, it passes a dump flag because we're also trying to dump uh, hashes there in this case. But yeah, so instead of just using a basic SQL injection, it's modifying something about this query that either the remote machine might be trying to check against that doesn't allow just for standard SQL injections to occur. And that's what's kind of an important thing to keep about or to understand about this. Uh, I'm gonna change my screen real quick and we're going to go over to this guy. So uh, can you actually, maybe, maybe not. Can you guys see that now? It changed, cool. So this is a hack the box machine, it's retired. Um, it's called proper if you wanna check it out. But what was found in parts of the machine, so this way that's not spoiling anything, uh, is this Ajax query. Uh, kinda what's interesting about it is at face value, it really doesn't seem like it's kinda, it's SQL injectable. Because you're looking at this, you go, well, there's no login panel. There's no login anything, but there's these parameters up here. Uh, there's an H value, which almost looks like a hash. Uh, and actually, if you run this against a hash checker, it will probably come back as an MD5 hash. And then there's an order, which seems to be coming back with an ID and then a description. Uh, so we can look at some of these and we can kind of glean that maybe the description part might be for when it's telling us that this is a free version or if it's a pro version and ID might be if it's the cleaner or the comparer. And, uh, but yeah, that's all speculation. Uh, if you just throw this, let's say, let's oh, grab this whole thing and we'll go to SQL map. I put the URL here. got to do it in um, that. <laughs> so the issue we we're having there was just that ampersand. Um, so SQL map will then try to uh, basically do its best to figure out if there is an SQL injectable query or injectable field here that it can start throwing random queries into. 
Um, and then now I have two SQL instances running at the same time because I accidentally backgrounded one of them, but we're gonna <laughs> just let that do its thing. <laughs> So right now it's going through all the different types of databases that could exist in the back end. Um, and we see that aside from this having this exiting, but there was an HTTP code error code detected during run. And we got a 403 forbidden 146 times. So it wasn't properly able to actually do any injecting. Um, and they're like, okay, well maybe, maybe, maybe we might be able to do something manually. So let's start tampering with this, this H, which is probably a hash. So I'm just gonna make an arbitrary, uh, a MD5 hash. So MD5 of yeet, and then put it here. Uh, it says tampering detected. So that's a little, that's a little strange. So what might seem like is these values are kind of checking one another. So if I maybe do something here, so I make it a capital S and then I hit enter tampering detected. So you might be thinking, okay, well, this should be, trivial right so this is id space description well okay well i'm gonna go echo i'm gonna make sure that there's no new line characters or and make sure it, if it needs to encode it encodes with the id desk so this just oh not like that like that so it just outputs id desk and we can output that to an md5 sum cool but wait a second that looks different that's a1 b something so this is going to be a little trickier because now what we're dealing with is there's probably a salt on the back end. So I'm going to skip over actually trying to figure out how to find that salt. I'm just going to go straight to it. There was a funky thing you can do, which causes an error to output in the source code. And it reviews, it reveals the salt here. And we can kind of see it's this uh, H-I-E-O, da, 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 da. And it says it's a secure pram salt. And it's used somewhere in this code, but we can see where the get order in here got errored. And so it just included that in the error output, which is very convenient for us. So what does this look like? Well, we can kind of start maybe messing with what this query should look like, or at least what the output, or not the output, but the hash should look like here. So if we have a hash of maybe yeet, might do something like, echo yeet hash md5 sum. I think another thing I would love to rather do is do something like this to see if it actually uh, correctly is working. So we'll use the original query. So that didn't look like it correctly was changed. Let's make sure that's correct. So a1, let's see, did, did I do that, grab that right? No. So probably do something like then the other way around more than likely. There we go. So it prepends the hat, it prepends the salt, and then it has the query. So this looks a lot like what this is supposed to be. So now if we do that with yeet instead, now we have that hash. And now what we should be able to do is while this probably won't return anything, it, we won't get tampering detected. Oh, well, I got to actually type yeet. So let's try that again. So yeah, we got nothing. Look at the page source, nothing. So good news is, is we got by, we bypassed that tampering. So now how does this translate to SQL injection? Well, what we'll have to do is figure out how to actually get SQL map to try to, for, uh, to, try to do this salting. And we can use that eval command and pretty much just do, yeah, just that we can, forward or we can not forge but we can start uh, creating a query that utilizes this kind of almost error handling error checking um, and it looks something like so you have sql map we're going to define our url and then what we'll do is we'll set an eval we'll set that equal to what our python code is going to be now if you're any familiar with python at all you might be familiar with the hash lib library, which is a common library or common module that's found in the standard library for Python that has a lot of hashing algorithms. Uh, one algorithm that it has is MD5. So if we knew that this, um, let me get back to here. So if we knew that this is the salt, so I'll say like salt equals this guy. We know this is the salt. 
we can do something like hashlib.md5. And we'll say salt plus, and I'm just going to say ID space uh, desk. And then dot hex digest. And what we're doing here is we're creating an MD5 hashing object. We're passing it the string that we want to hash. And then we're telling it to give us our, that hex digest. And that's what that common, um, that common 32 bit uh, string that you see here. It's actually a hexadecimal representation of the hash itself. And if we hit enter here, um, <laughs> whoops, everything has to be bytes. So let's, let's do this uh, one little dot encode here. Good old Python three, hey? Yep. <laughs> and there you go. So making sure we put it as bytes, <laughs> we were able to get the hash out of there. So this is actually really uh, not a lot of code. So this is super nice for trying to do something like SQL map. Um, and I need to make sure that I put this in quotation marks so that I don't get um, shot in the foot again. So we'll do Evo and just start making our one liner. So import hash lib, and then you can use semicolons in Python. Uh, H for our hash, I'm gonna say hash lib dot md5. And then we're gonna pass it our salt, which is going to be this guy right here. And we're gonna add that to, uh, or sorry, we'll, we'll have to make sure it's bytes. I think this is actually using Python too. Um, Cause I did, I did run in this issue. I couldn't just do like a byte string, but I had to tell it uh, dot encode. Actually, that is a Python 3 thing. I don't know. I was running into weird issues with it. So I had to do a dot encode on there. And then you do something like order dot encode ASCII. So, and this is for the different parameters that are here too. So if you notice that the initial hash, this H value is what's corresponding to that H parameter. And the order value here is what's corresponding to this order parameter. And this is going to be injected by SQL map. And so from there, we can take all of this and hex digest. And that's what's going to be set into the H field. And you don't have to escape the double quotes for your salt? Because um, it's eval also uses oh, the yeah. double quotes. You know what? Sorry. That was my fault. Okay. Yep. Should go have to do that. Ah, nice. <laughs> yeah. You would, I, I believe you would have to, um, but yeah, you should be. There we go. And then now we do that. Or yeah. double quotes. There we go. So walk through it one more time. Um, so SQL map, we're going to send it to this URL. The URL notice has the parameters in there for order and H. So order was the value that we're going to query with. And then the H value is kind of like a redundancy check just to make sure that the order value has not been tampered with. The eval command is then going to perform a hash lib hashing with an MD5 algorithm using the salt that we have achieved from the server. And then we're going to kind of pair together the two parameters of order and the H or the hash. And it's going then to going to put, assign that hash into the H value, which should be our hash that it's going to be basically kind of doing our error checking here. Um, as far as for the, uh, what we want to do, we can dump or we can just let this run against it. And for now, I'm going to let that run. Why didn't it run? Um, property. Okay, well, that worked. Let me do, I'll just copy paste from my notes here. Oh, well, that didn't work out right. Copy pasting from. My notes is really screwing up my terminal. <laughs> All right, cool. Try that. So I must have messed up some character, but the query is effectively the same. I think I might have mucked up something. So it notices that it's an MSQ, uh, uh, MySQL database or some derivative of it. So we're going to go ahead and just start um, basically querying, making queries against it. And we can see right away, it's pretty much, yeah, it found everything really quick. And because now we told it basically how to talk to the SQL instance through that Ajax query. And now we're able to get a proper SQL injection. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if for taking this further, you can do, like I said, you can do 
as we saw in this um, in this hack tricks little documentation, it was mentioning that we could use this for Flask. It could be for any number of custom algorithms. Just and this is more of just to be like kind of a translation layer for uh, SQL map. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> awesome. That Thank was you. really good.